new format time what's going on everyone it's ben from ygo from zero back with another retro Yu Gi Oh video and back with my first fiber gameplay video now if you missed my guide on this format that i released the other day then definitely go check that out it explains all the new cards added to the card pool and also what limited lists we're using but basically this format is going to be a follow-up to joey pegasus format with some very powerful new cards introduced from legacy of darkness the main four cards that were added are things like exiled force Fiber Jar, Injection Fairy Lily, and Yadagarasu. So based on these new cards, I threw together a deck, you know, very, very basic good stuff pile, and very much a first pass at this. After playing the games that I will show off in this video, I would definitely make some changes to it, which I'll discuss later. But I think that this is a good place to just start by exploring the format, as this format is very underexplored. There aren't really any past deck lists that you can really draw from for this format, as people haven't really played this format, at least in the past couple of years. However, after trying a game or two with it, I actually think this is really fun, and there are actually a lot of very interesting things that can come about from these new cards, despite how degenerate they may seem at first. So let's dive into the card by card here and explain my reasoning behind these choices. Now, honestly, a lot of the reason behind these choices is just that this is the good stuff list from Joey Pegasus, including the four new cards here, but there are some good things to keep in mind. So, of course, first we've got the Beater Triangle, two Gemini Elf, two Kaiku, and two Bazoo, and this is probably the area where I'd make the most adjustment following the games that I played, but I wanted to test out this arrangement just to see which of the beaters I actually valued more in this format, given that there are some very meta-warping cards introduced, and I'll get into my thoughts on these beaters at the end of the video, but I think that this is a good starting test sequence if you want to test out this format for yourself and are wondering what beaters to go for, I think that just starting with the 2 2 2 ratios here can give you an idea of which ones you want to see and which ones you don't. Outside the beaters, we've got three Mystic Tomatoes to fetch out Witch of the Black Forest and Sangan. I think that these are still very good. We've also got a Cannon Soldier to fetch out off of the Mystic Tomatoes as well, and I do think that Cannon Soldier could potentially see a fair amount of play in this format given how aggressive it can get, as life points really do matter a lot. When Fiber Jar resets the board, your life points stay the same, so I do think that Cannon Soldier should be seeing play in a lot of decks, but I decided to test it out here. You'll see if it actually does come up or not. We've also got an Exiled Force, which is great removal. Fiber Jar, of course, it's a powerful new card. Injection Fairy Lily, as I mentioned, can get a lot of damage in. Yadagarasu, in case we can go for the Yadalock. We've got a Jinzo here to shut down our opponent's traps and also the Searchable Off of Witch. We've got two Magician of Faith to fetch back powerful spells from Grave. We've got a Sinister Serpent to just act as a recurrable monster. And then, of course, moving on to the spells, we've got a lot of powerful limited cards. We've got Change of Heart, Comfy, Dark Hole, Graceful Charity, Harpy's Feather Duster, Monster Reborn, Nobleman of Crossouts in here to deal with the Fiber Jar, Painful Choice because it's, it's great just sending a bunch of cards to get what you need, Pot of Greed, Raigeki, a Scapegoat as, you know, damage does matter, and I do think that this can be a good defensive option, a Snap Seal, and a Force of Sentry. For the Spell and Trap removal, we do have the three MST here, as I really do think that MST is super, super good, especially given that Imperial Order is in this format and can really shut down a lot of things. So I do think that having the three MST with potentially one Harvey's Feather Duster is a good option here. For the traps, we've got Call of the Haunted, Imperial Order, and Mirror Force, all pretty self-explanatory, all very powerful cards. The side deck could honestly use some work. I honestly just filled it with things that I might want to include. Uh, we do have the standard side deck cards for Exchange and Penguin Knight, uh, up against Empty Jar and Exodia specifically. But honestly, you might want to consider cutting Penguin Knight as Empty Jar this format's really bad given Fiber Jar exists. So if you're able to set up a Fiber Jar, then Empty Jar kind of just loses as they reset all their progress. You get in more damage and it's having a tough time. So I don't necessarily think Penguin Knight is as much of a side deck staple as it was in previous formats. Exchange, though, I think still can be good for Exodia, although Fiber Jar also really does mess up Exodia as well. We've got a Duo, a Cyber Jar, a Heavy, a Nobleman, a Scapegoat, a Ceasefire, three Jars of Greed, and three Torrentials. Again, these are just sort of mix and match, see what I like in the deck, see what I don't like in the deck. But now that we've covered the card by card breakdown, let's dive into some games so I can show off how fun this format can actually be. Okay, first game up, we've got a game against Soul65, who's a frequent guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. Let's dive in to the first game of Fiber. This was actually my first game ever playing the format, so it was very exciting to sort of test. And uh, I think it might have been Souls as well, as there hadn't really been too much testing in this format in my Discord yet, although we do have an option to test out future formats that are coming up. So we open the nuts here. We're going to start off with a Pot of Greed, draw two. 
And we could go for the graceful as well, but honestly, I think I kind of want to save the graceful just so that way we can have the most knowledge when we activate it and know what we want to discard. And I think that this hand is pretty good as is. We're just going to summon out a bazoo, uh, banish a pot of grease, so that way it can't get over um, with a kaiku. And uh, we're just going to set a mirror force here, pass back to them. So uh, Bazoo's attack is 1900 using the new dueling book feature to actually buff up attack directly. Uh, Soul's going to activate a pot of greed as well, and they're going to think about what to do. They're going to fire a forceful here, so we do get kind of punished for holding on to the graceful. Although graceful does become sort of forceful bait. So they'll shuffle back the graceful and uh, go for a dark wool here. So they'll clear the Bazoo. They're going to fire a reinforcement of the army here, grabbing a gear freed. And that is a very interesting strategy that you can actually play in this format. Uh, Rota is very good. I mean, it's semi-limited, but it can get Exiled Force, which is, of course, insane. And also, Gear Freed has utility with an equip called Blast with Chain, which is very, very good. A very neat combo. We may see it come up later in these games here. Um, but, so it is something that people are experimenting with, playing a small warrior package of some Gear Freed, the Exiled Blast with Chain, and some Rotas. So, they're going to bring out the Gear Freed, and I actually do think about this, and I go for the Mirror Force here. And the reason I do this is because if they've got Blast with Chain, they can just pop the Mirror Force anyways. So I want to clear the Gear Freed before they actually have a chance to do that. I have Dark Hole as well, but if I fire Dark Hole next turn and they Chain Blast with Chain, then we lose the Mirror Force here either way, so I think it's fine to fire it now. I also think in this format where damage matters a lot, uh, you can just get aggressive. You know, you can fire your Mirror Force early and just clear the way for more stuff. We draw Snatch Jewel, which isn't really that good. We could summon a Cannon Soldier and just attack in for damage. Um, but if they've got another gear freed off of that, then we can't snap steal it off the dark hole. It's, it, there's some awkward stuff there, so I think it's fine just, like, holding the cannon soldier we can save it for later. Especially to pair it with the snap steal to potentially tribute off our opponent's monster. Our opponent's gonna pass as well, though, and Call of the Haunted gives us access to another monster. So I am just going to bring out the cannon soldier here, attack in for 1400, and I'm actually going to pass to them. I figure one of the reasons they may not be committing is if they're playing something like Heavy Storm. I don't know, I don't think that Heavy's that good in this format over something like Harpy's Feather Duster, but it could be an option that they're trying out here, and so I don't want to commit more back row into that. So I'll hold the call, I don't really think I need it right now. They're going to go for a painful choice here, sending, uh, of course, some hand rips, a graceful, a tomato, and a change of heart. Change of heart is honestly annoying because they can just take the Cannon Soldier then tribute it off. But honestly, I think it is the best option, as with Tomato, they can just crash into the Cannon Soldier. Graceful, they can draw deeper to their deck. It does look like they might be slightly bricked on things, and uh, we don't want to give them more hand rips here. So, I think I am just going to let them take the change. Uh, we do lose the Cannon Soldier here, but we also do have a Call of the Haunted in hand to bring it back later. Um, but they're just going to... Oh, they're going for a Jinzo. Okay, I mean, that is also fine. Uh... That does shut off our call, but we do have Snatch Steel, as I said. We've also got this Dark Hole here. Ooh, and that's pretty good. We're going to fire the Dark Hole, summon out the Kaiku, attack in for 1800. And now we can actually banish that Jinzo and banish the Gear Freed here. Uh, just to cut them off of monsters if they draw into something like a Reborn. Now there are no monsters that can actually trade with Kaiku, as Bazoo can't use its effect when your opponent has a Kaiku on field. So I feel pretty good about that. So we're just depriving them of potential top decks that they can do. They're going to set one, pass back to us. And we draw Fiber Draw, which is pretty nice. We're going to go for a Nobleman of Cross out here, clearing their set. And uh, we're going to attack in with Kaiku. So we will be able to get to banish two cards from their graveyard, and I really should have done this. I actually forgot, and this actually can really come up given Fiber Jars in the format. If you're able to banish spells from your opponent's grave, which you can actually do at this time due to a mistranslation of Kaiku's effect, that will be active until like October 2003. This format takes place July 2003. Uh, then you can actually make it so that your Fiber Jar is even better, as your opponent will be lacking some very good cards from their deck. But I, it honestly slipped my mind, and uh, that could potentially come back to bite us. We'll have to see. Opponent's going to go for a Raigeki here, clearing the Kaiku, set one pass back to us. We draw a Mystical Space Knife, and we're just going to pass back to them. I, I think we're still in a pretty good spot. We don't need to commit the Fiber Jar just yet. Uh, they're going to bring out a Yada Grasu, which will be able to Yada Lock us here, which is quite unfortunate. And the only way we actually have... To do, I mean, we've got Call of the Haunted, so we can fire that, but, you know predictably they do have the mystical space i've been for that so realistically the only way we actually have to deal with this yadagarasu is to set fiber jar and just hope that our opponent doesn't have like a normal cross out or something that can just deal with that fiber jar and luckily it looks like our opponent does not they're just going to bring out a mystic tomato let's see what they actually had 
yeah, they didn't have anything here, but they did have an interesting tech that you may see later in the game, Last Will. Uh, they're going to hit into the Fiber Jar here. And interestingly enough, uh, Fiber Jar actually does have a macro now on Dueling Book. So you can actually activate its effect automatically. Uh, I don't actually think I realized that at the time because Fiber Jar has to actually be on field to use the macro. So we do it the slow way here. Uh, luckily, we do figure this out uh, partway through the matches that I'm going to show off on the channel today. But I guess while we're doing this, uh, I might as well take the time to say, if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you enjoy this sort of content, please do subscribe as, uh, you know, uh, it's the best way to get notified on the future Fiber videos that I'm planning on putting out and also just the future retro videos that I'm planning on putting out in general. So our opponent does draw five and they draw a forceful sentry here. So they will be able to shuffle back a card from our hand. Oh, and as a note, you may notice that Fiber Jar gets shuffled back as well. And that is how the card worked at this point in the game's history. Later on in the game's history, they release a ruling that will actually prevent Fiber Jar from actually getting shuffled into the deck with everything else. Um, but in this format, it will indeed. We're going to bring out Bazoo and just get aggressive here. We've got Reborn and bring back Bazoo later. We've got Mirror Force. I mean, we're pretty set. So I think we've pretty much got the game on lock. We were able to get a lot of damage in early, and the Fiber Jar makes it really advantageous here as we can get in a lot of damage pretty easily here. They're going to set three pass back to us. We draw Forceful Sentry. So we won't be able to go for lethal this turn, but we're going to attack into that set. They've got Mirror Force. Main two, we are just going to fire the Force. We'll see what they've got. And they've got a Sinister Serpent and a Fiber Jar. Well, I think Fiber Jar is the pick here, as we don't necessarily want them to shuffle back all the progress here, uh, because we are in a pretty good spot. Then I'll shuffle in that Fiber Jar. They've got a Serpent left in hand. We'll just set the Call of the Haunted. If they've got, like, Harpy's Feather Duster, that's unfortunate. But uh, we do have Reborn to bring back the Bazoo, so it's not the worst. Uh, they've got Reinforcement in the Army, though, so that will be able to get them a Gear Freed here. So they'll be able to bring in that Gear Freed and get in for 1800. We do indeed have the Mirror Force for that though, and we will fire it. And they're just going to pass back to us. We draw Injection Fairy Lily, which may be the end of the game. We're going to Reborn back this Bazoo and uh, just get in for lethal damage, as there isn't really anything unless they're playing like Karibo that they can really do to stop this. So we're going to attack into their set. Since it is Tomato, they'd get another monster, but we can buff up Injection Fairy Lily to 3400, and that will be enough to kill them. So, I think that that game shows some very interesting things about this format. First of all, the Autolock can indeed happen. It didn't actually work out for Soul since we did have a way to out the Autolock in hand, but they were able to pull it off and it did put us into a bit of a desperate position. If they did have a way to clear the Fiber Jar, we would have just lost that game. So, the Autolock is very, very powerful. In addition, Fiber Jar, very, very powerful. As you saw that game, it was able to reset the progress of the game, and since we had gotten in a lot of damage early, we were in a very good position to finish off our opponent afterwards. So, keeping in mind these lessons that we learned from this game, I think I actually did make some slight changes to the deck. I think I cited out Sinister Serpent, maybe? I do that at some point in these games that I play. Because I feel like the recurable resource, while nice, is not necessarily as good in Fiber format. Um, and there are just so many other power cards that you do want to have. Things like Nolman of Crossa can be very good. Um, so I think the Sinister Serpent is maybe not the best here. Although, it could be a way to potentially stop the Autolock. If you have a Serpent, you can set the Serpent. Your opponent will be forced to commit something else to hit over the Serpent. And then you can potentially draw into something to break the lock. So maybe it was a mistake to side that out. Maybe I should have kept it. But I think as is, this is fine. I think I might have also signed out a Harpies, given that there's so many chainable back row in this format. Uh, and given that they're also playing, like, Gear Freed, it is obviously a lot worse, because we figure that they're also on Blast with Chain. We're going to attack in for 11 with this Witch here, and just pass back to them. We feel like we've got a pretty good hand here. Our opponent's just going to pass back to us, and I feel good about this. We draw Yada, and it may be a bit greedy to summon out Yada in case they've got, like, Torrential or Mirror Force. But I think we do just have to go for it. If they do, then we get a Search off Witch, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Unfortunately, they do indeed have the Mirror Force. We'll get a Search. We'll Search out a Kaiku, as Kaiku is very strong, given that we have Fiber. So we can banish some Power Cards from Grave, then Fiber Jar away everything back to deck. Our opponent's going to bring out a Yada of their own and attack in for 200. But given that we have got six cards in hand, uh, we're perfectly fine with this. They're going to set one, pass back to us. We don't draw here, but we will be able to bring out this Kaiku. That's fine by them. So we'll attack in for 1800, banish that Mirror Force from their graveyard, and then just pass back to them. Our opponent is going to fire a Snatch Shield, which is very unfortunate. They'll be able to get in for 18. I feel like they probably also should have gone for Yada here, but they might have a card to set 
which would be unfortunate. Our opponent's going to banish two off the Kaiku. Ah, that's why they didn't go for the outer. They're planning on tributing off for a Jinzo here. I think that was the right sequence of events. You do want to banish power cards from your opponent's graveyard with the Kaiku. Uh, unfortunately for them, we do have this pot of greed here, so we will be able to draw two. And we also have a graceful, so we're just going to fire that. Uh, the redundant Mystic Tomato is honestly a pretty good pitch here, so I feel comfortable doing this. We're going to pitch the Tomato and pitch a Bazoo here. And then we're going to fire a Snatch Shield. They do have a Mystical Space Typhoon, but that's why we fired the Snatch Shield first, just in case. Then we're going to set a Magician of Faith, and I... We really should not have set the Nobleman here. Uh, there's no reason to bluff, given that they've got Jinzo on field, so, you know, they can't activate traps either way. Uh, however... As you'll see here, uh, this won't actually matter in the end. They're going to fire a Dark Hole, fire a Monster Reborn to bring back this Jinzo here. And uh, they will indeed be able to get lethal damage as they do have this copy of Last Will. Um, so they will be able to fetch out an Injection Fairy Lily from the deck here. And uh, that should be the end of the game because they've got Yada in hand. They have any? They also had Fire Jar on him, but that wouldn't matter. So maybe if we had cleared the Jinzo last turn with, like, Raigeki, or if we'd gone for the Ectile Force on the Jinzo, maybe then they wouldn't have been able to pull off the last Will combo as much, and we would have potentially been still in the game. Uh, but I do think that it probably was the correct choice to do what we did. I mean, I didn't think we were going to get OTK'd, but last Will can really open up some possibilities for OTK, given that Injection Fairy Lily is in the format. But... You know, that's how these games can go sometimes, and it does potentially mean that Last Will is something to experiment with. So I'm very curious to hear your all thoughts on that card. Let me know down in the comments below whether you like Last Will in this format or not. But either way, we're going to go into the last game of this match here. I don't quite remember what I cited. I think I did have the two Noblemans in here. Cited out the Serpent and the Feather Zester, but I could be wrong about that. We'll just have to see, but this hand is pretty nuts. We're going to set a Tomato, set this uh, Imperial Order here. We don't really need to set the Call of a Haunt in case they do have Harpy's Feather Duster plus MST. Uh, I feel like we can just commit the Imperial Order and that will be fine. Uh, we can save Call of a Haunt for when we have an actual card in Graveyard to revive here. They're going to bring out a Mystic Tomato here and set one pass back to us. Looks like they're a bit afraid of our set here, and that works out very well for us. So we'll be able to think about this a bit, summon out the Gemini Elf and just attack into that tomato. We could have flipped up our tomato as well and attacked into the tomatoes, gone into a tomato war and done something with that. Um, but that plays a bit too heavily into Mirror Force for my liking, so I don't actually want to do that. Uh, I'm fine just preserving the tomato set on field. They're going to trigger their tomato, get out a witch. Which means that if they've got like Darkhold, that's really bad. But we do indeed have the Imperial Order here, so it's not the worst. We actually are going to set the Call of the Haunted now, figuring that if they do have the Darkhold play, this insulates against that a little bit. Um, but let's see what they do here. They're going to go for a change of heart. We're going to fire Imperial Order, so that will go through. So that means that they likely don't have a Mystical Space Typhoon, which is very good for us. Uh, they're going to attack the Witch into the Gemini Elf here. So they'll be able to get a search off Witch. And... There's actually a bunch of good options they can go for. They're going to go for a tomato, interestingly enough. I think, honestly, they maybe could have gone for a fiber jar here just to, you know, have us reset the board. Because they are in a really bad position. Uh, however, the position is just going to get a bit worse. And switching a fiber jar wouldn't have actually helped them. Uh, we're going to pay the 7 to keep Io on field. Tribute over the tomato for a Jinzo here. So now our Imperial Order is shut off. And we can go for a Nobleman of Cross out, banishing their set. It is indeed the tomato that they had before. Uh, but I figured that we had to go for the Nobleman there in case it was something like a fiber jar. But I think this game should probably be pretty wrapped up. Opponent's going to think about this a bit. Summon out a Cannon Soldier. Uh, fire a Last Will. So that will work out very well for them. And they're going to tribute off the Cannon Soldier. So that way they'll be able to get out another monster here. If they get an Injection Fairy Lily, they basically do lose the game, unfortunately. Um, as, you know, they'll only be able to use its effect once. And after that, we can just attack in. So it's not exactly the best. So they're just going to go for an Exiled Force to pop the Jinzo here. Uh, and if they don't have any follow-up, then, you know, that's really bad for them. But they're going to set two, and that could potentially give them some follow-up. Unfortunately, we do have this Call of the Haunted, so we will be able to bring back Jinzo in the end phase. And since Imperial Order is up, our opponent won't be able to change something like MST to that. Uh, and so this should lock up the game pretty nicely. Uh, so, I mean, we can just attack in here, but, you know, that that's the end of the game. They've got Call of the Haunted, a, uh, yeah, they, they don't, oh, I guess, okay, so... We do actually, you know, rewind it here just to make the game a bit more interesting for you viewers. So, you know, they realized that they should have actually changed Call of the Haunted to our Call of the Haunted, and that would have been the correct thing to do, as then we don't have exact lethal on board. 
Um, but if they had done that, we actually do have another way to lethal. We're summon out this cannon soldier, then hit into the tomato. They'll take a thousand, and that's game on board, honestly. Um, but even if they bring out another monster, we can attack into it with the elf here as well. And uh, yeah, that, that will just be the end of the game as cannon soldier can indeed tribute off our monsters. So they also had Blast with Chain, Mirror Force, and Forceful Sentry, none of which would really do them any good in this situation. But I think that these games were really, really fun. And actually, like, I think they were somewhat more interesting than Joy Pegasus games, which is kind of weird to think about, given that you'd think that the format would get even more degenerate with Fiber Jar. But I do think that there actually were some healthy inclusions to the format, and Fiber Jar actually does make things a bit more interesting in a lot of different cases. But this one, the only match that I played to start off my exploration of the format, we actually played another game as well, so let's dive into that. Okay, we've got a game against Aretos here, who is another very active duelist in the Discord, and also also a frequent guest on the channel, so always a pleasure to have them on. We are going to go into the Rock, Paper, Scissors here, and uh, we unfortunately do lose that Rock, Paper, Scissors. And even though this is the second match that I played, I didn't actually make any changes to the deck. I do have some ideas for changes to make to the deck. I mean, as you can probably guess from my sideboarding process, I would probably cut the Serpent and a Harpies maybe even, um, which may seem really strange as Serpent is just generally seen as a very good card. Um, but I do think that with Fiber Jar in the format, it does become a lot less good. Our opponent's going to go for a confiscation here, and they do hit the Fiber Jar, which is the correct choice, as Fiber Jar is nuts, uh, and that, you know, sets us back a little bit. Our opponent's going to set two. We're going to start with a painful choice. Send Forceful, Confi, Jinzo, and now we get to actually think here. We're also going to send a Harpies and a Serpent, because we do have the Serpent in the deck here. They're going to give us the Serpent for sure. Um, but yeah, maybe we shouldn't have sent the Harpies, as now they know that we don't have a Harpies in deck. So it gets a bit worse for us. But I do think that Harpies is one of the worst cards in our deck, which really seems weird to say. We're just going to bring out this Elf attack in to their set. Uh, it's just the Serpent, so they'll be able to get that back in standby phase. Then they'll set uh, two pass back to us. We draw a Mystic Tomato. We're going to bring out a Kaiku here. Unfortunately, they do have Trap Hole to clear that. And then we're just going to attack in this Tomato. Uh, they'll be able to get out another Tomato here. And they'll pass back to us. They are going to fire a Pot of Greed here, and then they're going to set one, switch the Tomato to Defense, and pass back to us. And I feel like I do just want to go aggressive here, so I summon out the Tomato and try and go for this. I do think this is a bit of a misplay, though. I think I should have just fired the Dark Hole in Main Phase 1 before summoning. Um, because, you know, if their set is something like a Magician of Faith, they can get back this Pot of Greed. And also, this will indeed clear their Tomato, so they can't get out more monsters with it. So I think it would have been the smart thing to do to go for the Dark Hole. Uh, this wasn't actually an Imperial Order, so it would have actually gone through. We would have been able to get a lot more aggressive, and our opponent potentially wouldn't have been able to get as much of an advantage on us as they will be able to get. Um, but, you know, I misplayed a bit, and it does happen. They're going to bring out a Witch of the Black Forest here. We're going to attack into the set. We had the read that it was Serpent, which was indeed correct. Or not correct, incorrect. That's what I meant. Uh, and they do indeed get back the pot, which is really bad for us. Now they're pretty far ahead. Uh, Darkhold doesn't really do anything here because they do have the Witch, which is really unfortunate. And yeah, this so this is not good for us. Uh, they're going to attack into the Elf, and then they're just going to switch the Witch Defense, set one, pass back to us. Darkhold really is not good for us here, uh, so we're just going to set the Serpent, switch the Tomato to Defense, and pass back to them. They are going to fire a Nobleman on the Serpent, so that will clear that. They've got an Exiled Force to clear the Tomato. And now they can get in for a bit more damage here, getting in for 3,300, which is really bad. Drops us very low, and as I said earlier, you know, damage is a very big thing in this format. We draw Change of Heart, which is okay, but honestly, it's not the best for us here. Uh, we're going to bring out this Bazoo and try and clear their Bazoo. So that will buff up to 2,500. We can attack into their Bazoo, hit over it for 3, and uh, then just pass back to them. But Snap Steel will indeed kill us here. So that will indeed be the end of the game. So maybe if I had played that a bit differently and gone for the Dark Hole play earlier in the game, it, things could have turned out differently. Um, but, you know, we played as we played. This is still a new format. Still trying to figure out exactly how to do things here. And, uh, yeah, it didn't work out for us well that game. But you live and learn. And even losses like that are good to take lessons from. So now we've learned that lesson for the future. Let's hope that our second game can go a little bit better here. And this is a pretty great opener, so uh, hopefully that's a good sign. We're going to start with a Confiscation, uh, see what they've got. And this is a pretty good opener, although uh, it's kind of awkward because we take the Graceful, they can get back with the Magician of Faith. Uh, they've got Witch to search other things out. Yeah, it is a bit tough. 
And actually, it does lead me to make a major decision in this first turn of the game. And it's a decision that may seem weird, but I think it was definitely the right choice. So we've got Comfy. We are indeed going to take the Graceful Charity here. As we've made the decision, and this may seem weird, we're just going to set the Fiber Jar first turn. And uh, because they can get back the Faith, they can search with the Witch. They've got a bunch of really good stuff to do in the coming turns. But they do need to actually have at least one turn to pull that off. And if they draw a way to out the Fiber Jar, that's obviously bad, but we didn't see one in their hand there. And I do think that they are likely going to commit like a Magician of Faith to board uh, on next turn or commit like a Tomato or something. Um, so I do feel fine about this play. They're gonna go for a Pot of Greed, wow. Uh, that might mess things up if they do draw a way to out Fiber Jar here. But it looks like they're just going to set two and pass. We're going to MST their set in the end phase because, you know, we just don't want any way for a fiber jar to get negated. There are very few ways to do it here, but, you know, we might as well just not take the chance. And we draw Magician of Faith. So we're just going to flip up this fiber jar, reset the, the game here, uh, and we actually do figure out the macro for it now. So this will be automatic. And, uh, yeah, it resets everything here. Um, although, for some reason, I don't think it reset there and... Uh, or maybe it did. Um... But either way, uh, this works out really well for us. We draw a hand rip and yada. So depending on what they have, we actually might be able to set up the yada lock here. We fire a confiscation, see that they've got a Rota, Dark Hole, Serpent, Fiber Jar, and Blast with Chain. The only thing that really contests what we have in hand is the Rota. So we do actually want to uh, hit the Rota here. Uh, so we will hit the reinforcement of the army. And now that we know what they've got, uh, I feel like we can indeed go for the yada lock here. Uh, no matter what they do next turn, they kind of do have to set a card. Uh, and we've got Nobleman to deal with that. And uh, we've also got Dark Hole to deal with whatever they might bring out as well. So I feel very good about this. We can just Yada Lock them for their life savings. If they do something like summon Sinister Serpent and attack, uh, we can potentially Dark Hole that and then summon Kaiku, hit in, banish the Serpent. They'll get a draw, which could potentially draw them something to get out of this. But I do think it would still be a very good position for us. Um, but as is, it really does depend on what they're going to do this turn. They don't get a draw. They're going to set one, and honestly, that is the best option for us. We could go Dark Hole here, having the read that it's like Fiber Jar, and wanting to save the Nobleman for the Serpent here. But I do think I do just want to fire the Nobleman, uh, and hit whatever they've got set. Uh, if it is the Fiber Jar, then, you know, we'll know about the Serpent, and we could potentially play around that. It's not perfect. But if it is the Serpent, then we just win the game because we Nobleman hit the Serpent. They set Fiber Jar. We've got Dark Bull. So I do think it's better just to go for the Nobleman now. And then we can just set up the Auto Lock. And uh, yeah, this will just be the end of the game. I feel very good about this. And uh, yeah, so this is this worked out pretty crazily for us. And I think it's a very good sort of example of a game where, you know, sometimes you do just want to fire Fiber early as it is just incredibly powerful. And if you know your opponent's got a hand that's slightly more advantageous than yours, then Fiber is the way to go. So that was a really fun game. I mean, it ended very degenerately because Aritos couldn't do anything against our Yada Lock there. And we had full hand knowledge there. But I do think it was very, very interesting. And also, just doing the first turn Fiber play was a very, very interesting choice. It's something that I didn't anticipate ever coming up in these games. But does show how powerful just shotgunning the Fiber can be early. So... That is going to be game two. We're going to go into game three. I think I did side out the Serpent and the Feather Duster here, like in the previous ones. And this is a pretty great opener. Um, they've got Pot of Greed, so they will be able to draw there, which is a bit unfortunate. They're going to summon out a Gemini Elf, set one pass back to us. They feel very good about this. We're going to fire the Pot of Greed. That's fine by them. And we draw Fiber Jar, which is pretty great as well. We're going to go for a copy here to see what they've got. And this is a pretty good hand for them, honestly. Huh, this is kind of iffy. I don't necessarily know what we want to get rid of. Reinforcing the army might be the choice because then they can get an exiled force here, which would obviously be bad, especially given we've got many powerful flips. Uh, yeah, I think it might be the move to get rid of the reinforcement. Yeah, so we are indeed going to take the reinforcement there. Next turn, we can set the Magician of Faith and then set the Scapegoat. We're just going to fire the Mystical Space Typhoon here. If it's Blast with Chain, they would have to chain it to that. And we don't have any cards on field for it to pop, so I do think that, that was the right choice. Um, but as is, we're just going to set the Scapegoat, set the Magician of Faith, pass back to them, see what they do. They're going to hit over the Magician of Faith. We'll be able to get back this Pot of Greed here. And I'm feeling very good about this. They're going to fire Forceful, though, so they will be able to take back that Pot of Greed, which is very unfortunate. And now they have full hand knowledge as well. 
They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Grateful Charity, so we're just going to go for that. And we draw three... Uh, I, don't, I don't know how these are. I think we definitely discard the Scapegoat. And yeah, I think we probably discarded the Cannon Soldier as well. Although, Scapegoat plus Cannon Soldier can be 2,500 points of damage. So it might be worth going for. But I think we just do this anyways and then set the Witch here. Uh, if they've got Fiber Jar, that's obviously unfortunate. Um, but... You know, we don't necessarily want to attack into it. They're going to hit into our set. It is the Witch here. So we will be able to uh, think about what we're getting. And we will be able to get out this Jinzo here. I feel good about that. Uh, we can set Tomato. Be sure that we'll have a monster on field to tribute over for Jinzo. Uh, and then potentially, you know, hit over the Elf. Cause them to pay 2,000 hit over the Jinzo. So I feel pretty fine about this. We're going to set the Tomato. Pass back to them. They're going to hit into our Tomato. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost Witch and Sangan here, so we'll just be able to bring out another Tomato. Um, so quite unfortunate, they're going to set another pass back to us. And we draw a Mystical Space type, and we're going to tribute over our Tomato for a Jinzo here. Maybe we shouldn't have done that, maybe we should have had the read that their new set was a Fiber Jar, and just attacked into it with the Tomato. Um, but I feel fine just going for the Jinzo play here. If they do do Fiber Jar, that's obviously very unfortunate for us, but we have 7,000, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Um... And it looks like they're going to go for a Gear Freed here. They're going to flip up an Injection Fairy Lily, so they are indeed going to attack over the Jinzo. We'll take a 1,000 for that, but this is kind of what we wanted them to do, so that way they'd be able to uh, take more damage than us. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to fire the Scapegoat here. They'll attack into it with a Gear Freed. And then they're going to think about what to do in Main Phase 2. Set 1, pass back to us. Uh, we draw Pot of Greed, which is pretty great. Uh, we're going to go for the Pot of Greed. They've got Io, but we've got in uh, Mystical Space Typhoon. And those are pretty good draws. I think I actually do misplay here slightly. I think what I should have done is had the read that their set was a Fiber Jar and just tried to trigger the Fiber Jar, like switching a token to attack and attacking into their set. Um, but that would have been a major read. They could have potentially set the Gear Freed to try and bait us into doing that. And if they did set the Gear Freed, then that would be really bad for us. Uh, but I think I probably should have just predicted that. As they would have gone for a lot more damage. Uh, maybe they wouldn't have because they saw that we discarded a Scapegoat, so they figured we had another Scapegoat on field, but... Yeah, so, I mean, maybe this was the discipline play. Um, but there definitely were other things I could have done here. Um, but yeah, we are just going to banish three here, getting Bazoo up to 2,500. And this actually was a major choice of what to banish, as we do know about them having Fiber Jar. We do have a Fiber Jar of our own. And we got a lot of powerful cards in Grave that we don't necessarily want to banish uh, if, it's, if cards are going to be getting shuffled back in the deck. But I think we picked some pretty good ones. We attack into their Gear Freed there. If they want to pay another 2,000 to attack into our bazoo, they can. Uh, if they've got Fiber Jar, they'll likely flip that up, though. They do indeed have the Fiber Jar, so that will shuffle up the entire uh, field. And so they will indeed go for that. Uh, even though we do get to use the macro in the games themselves to make this, you know, go a lot quicker. Uh, it looks like in the replays, it still does, you know, take some time to actually accomplish. So uh, everything's going to go back to deck, and uh, you'll hear a lot of rapid mouse clicking here. Um, but let's just hope that our opponent can't actually kill us from this position. Uh, I do feel like we're doing pretty good. 6,000 is a lot of damage to actually get on board here. Um, uh, but our opponent's going to bring out a Witch and attack in, and that's a very good position to be in. They're going to set two pass back to us. We've got Pot of Greed, so we are going to fire that, and that will go through, so I feel pretty good about that. We're trying to get aggressive here. I think, honestly, we maybe should have set the Fiber Jar, um, just to shuffle things up again. Um, but unfortunately, we don't do that. And the reason why we go for Fiber Jar is that we are running a little bit low, and we could potentially want to get the advantage back uh, in our favor. And we do have the Imperial Order to shut off, like, a moment of cross out or something. Um, but I think that it was fine just going on the aggressive. They had to have, like, Mirror Force, really, to actually deal with that. They've got an MST to deal with the Imperial Order here. They've got Reborn to bring back a Gemini Elf, and this will likely be the end of the game. Oh, or not. Okay, so we're still living. Uh, we got 3,000 damage there, and so now we're down to 19. So we're in a very tough spot, but we are still indeed living. We're going to go for a Forceful here, and we will get to see their hand. We see they've got a Fiber Jar and a Call of the Haunted here. And I do make a bit of an interesting play here. I shuffle back the Jar, and you might be wondering why that is. Um, because, like, it doesn't really help them here. The reason I want to do this is I want to make them think that we don't actually have a Fiber Jar of our own set. Because why would we shuffle back a Fiber Jar if we are not worried about what they're going to do in a couple turns because we've got a Fiber Jar of our own? So I do this play to just sort of try and mind game them a little bit. Um, and 
yeah, the Call of the Haunted won't actually get to see play either, given that we've got a fiber drive of our own here, if we are actually able to pull that off. They're going to bring out a Gear Freed, and this is a little bit worrying. We just got to hope that their set is not a Blast with Chain, but unfortunately, it is indeed a Blast with Chain. We'll be able to equip that to the Gear Freed, pop our set, and that will indeed be the end of the game. So I think those were some really good ones, and I think that Fiber Jar actually made these games a lot more interesting than I expected. I figured Fiber Jar would just be a degenerate card, and to be fair, it is very degenerate you know, resetting the game and also enabling you to pull off some just disgusting plays like what we did with the Yadalock in game two against Aretos. But I do think it also does lead to some very interesting decisions and some very skillful decisions. So I think it does actually add a lot of flavor and interesting interaction to the game. And also with the introduction of new things like Exiled Force, like reinforcing the army to stretch out Exiled Force, and some other ways to just deal with things like Fiber Jar. I think it actually isn't like too, too broken. It is very broken, don't get me wrong. Um, but I do think it is like more interesting than expected. But what do you all think of these games and this format? I mean, I'm really excited to dive into this even more. I think my, the next deck that I'll probably explore will be a deck revolving around Gear Freed and Blast of Chain as this deck looked really sick in the game that Aratus played with it, and also in the game that Soul played with it, they were also on it. So I think it is something that a lot of people are going to be trying out, and so I'd like to try my hand at it. I think for changes to the, you know, good stuff pile that I've got here, I think what I'd probably do is, you know, take out the Serpent and put the Harpy's Feather Duster in the side deck. Uh, I'd bring in a second Nobleman in the main, and probably honestly a second Scapegoat as well, because damage really does matter in this format a lot. And scapegoat is a great way to insulate yourself from that. And then I'd probably also potentially cut down on a bazoo, as bazoo is a really tricky card to play in this format, given that, you know, you do want to keep a lot of your most powerful cards in graveyard in case your opponent does have a fiber jar to shuffle everything back. So those would be the major changes that I'd make. Uh, let me know if you want to see another video with this good stuff build and just like tinkering with it further and trying to optimize it a bit more. Maybe I could even do like a stream where I play a bunch of games in the format and we sort of optimize as a group effort uh, as I go. Let me know down in the comments below if that would be something that you're interested in. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to dive into this format. I think it's a lot more fun than I potentially anticipated and I'm excited to sort of go on this journey with you all. As always, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like down below. And of course, you know, as I've been saying, let me know your thoughts on this down below as well in the comments. But until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero, and I'm signing off.